Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I will be showing you how to make product photos for Etsy listings using Canva. This particular product photo is going to be for a digital download item that I'll be uploading to my Etsy shop. There is a tutorial on my channel where I show you how to create that weekly planner page. I'll leave it linked in the description below if you'd like to see that tutorial. At the time I'm recording this video, this weekly planner page is not available in Etsy. I will show you how to create an Etsy listing in the next video. In the next video, I will show you how you would list this digital item. But for this video, I'm going to show you how to make the product photos. So to get started, head to canva.com. Once you're logged in, head to create a design in the upper right hand corner. Head to custom size. This document is going to be sized 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. All of my Etsy product photos are squares. I have also done 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. But for this video, I'm going to do 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. After you have your dimensions put in, click create new design. I already have a document in Canva that's 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels that I've been using for my Etsy listing photos. So I'll use that one. For these product photos, what I'm basically going to do is use the thumbnail that I created for that previous tutorial and turn it into the product photo. And I'm also going to use some mock-up frames in this product photo. I do have a tutorial on how to create mock-ups in Canva, and I will link that video in the description below as well. So with your product photos, you want to have an image or picture of your product. So since mine is a weekly planner page, I saved it as a PNG. So what I'm going to do now is upload those two PNGs to Canva. If you head over to uploads in the left side panel, and click on upload files and choose the files that you want uploaded. So for each Etsy listing, you can add up to 10 photos and one video. On average, I usually have between three to five images for my listings. So I usually like to do the first image as one that shows kind of like everything that you get. And then the second image would be kind of like a close up of certain pages or elements within your product. Depending on what you're offering, you may have a couple of those product photos that are close-ups of what you're offering. And you also want to show the customer how they would use your product. So that's where the mock-up frames come in handy. For this weekly printer planner page, the customer will receive two single page PDFs. So what I'm going to do now is bring in those two images that I uploaded into my document by just clicking on each one. So here's a close up of both of those uploads. So what I'm going to do right away is change the background color of this document. And once I do that, you'll be able to see the two pages better. So you click on your background and head up to background color, and then you would just choose a background color. So I'm going to use this muted yellow color for the background. I may decide to change it later. So now what I'm going to do is rotate each of these pages. So I click on one of them and I use the rotate button that's underneath the image and click and rotate. So I'm going to take one page and rotate it to the left and the other page and rotate it to the right. Not too much, just a little to make it more appealing. And also what you can do is make the one that's in the back a little bit smaller than the one that's in the front to create some visual interest. And now I'm just going to center it within my document. Another thing I'm going to do is add some shadows to these images. I'm going to click on the one in the front. If you head to edit image in the upper left hand corner, and here's where you can find different effects you can apply to your image. So for this case, I'm going to add a shadow. So if you scroll down here to effects and click on shadows, there's a couple different shadow options you can apply to your image. When you click on one of the shadow choices, it gives you options that you can adjust for your shadows the blur amount, the angle, the distance, the color, and the intensity. And you adjust those items using the slider bar. I adjusted the angle so that the shadow is on the left and bottom of the image. And I'm going to decrease the distance to make it a little bit more subtle. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the image that's behind. So once you've made all your changes, you can click anywhere in the document. And so now we have our two images with our shadows applied. And then after you've made your changes to your images, you can add text. Press T on your keyboard to bring up a text box. And you would want to add the title of your item 
And I also like to add some features that are available with this product that they're purchasing. And personally for me, I don't like to crowd the product photo with a lot of text. I want the title and as well as a couple bullet points of what they're going to receive when they purchase the product. Especially since you can have multiple product photos and you can put a couple different details about your product on each of those product photos. And another thing to keep in mind when you are creating your product photos, you may want to keep your text at the top of the product photo. Sometimes when you're adjusting your thumbnail in your Etsy listing, some of the text may not show on the Etsy search page. And I will show you what I mean in the other video about how to upload products to Etsy. I'm going to take my two images and move them down a little bit. And then I'll move my text up higher. And now you can adjust your text by changing the font, making it larger, adding shadows and effects to it. With your text box selected, head up to effects. And here are some effects that you can add to your text. So for this, I'm going to use the outline effect, decrease its thickness and change the color of the outline. If you click on the color option, you can change the color. If you click on the plus, you can add a new color. If you click on this little dropper tool, you can pick a color from the design. So once I click it, the eyedropper tool comes up. So then you'll take that eyedropper tool and hover over any color that you want to match. So I think I'm going to choose this pink that's in the printable weekly planner page. And once I've hovered over that color, I'm just going to click and then it's going to change the outline of this text. And so now the outline is pink. I think what I'm also going to do is add like a rounded rectangle, kind of like this one that's on the printable page. So what I'm going to do is hit R on my keyboard to bring up a rectangle. So now I'm just going to size this rectangle so that it fits over the text. So now what I'm going to do is click on the rectangle only and then I'm going to head up to border style. And now I'm going to adjust the corner rounding. I'm also going to change the color of this rectangle, maybe to like a darker pink. So click on your rectangle, head up to the color picker. So now I'm just going to center my text box and my rectangle. So what I'm trying to do here is pretty much see what color works well with the pink of this document. So I think I'm going to go with this bluish green color. And once I'm done with that, I'm just going to click anywhere in the document. And so once I have this, now I want to put a couple of the features that are available. So usually what I'll do is copy both the text and the rectangle and paste it. And then I type in whatever feature I want to appear on this first product photo. And I try to think about what's the most important thing I want to show the customer. If this first image is the only image that they look at on the Etsy search page, you want to make sure that you show them what they're getting as well as kind of pull out a couple of the features that are available as well. For a lot of items, only the thumbnail is the thing that gets seen in the Etsy search. Sometimes people don't click on the listing itself. So you want to kind of make sure that that first image is really capturing what you want your future customer to know. So before I add that additional text to this product photo, I'm going to select the two images and lock them so that they don't move. So for this page, I put that it's eight and a half by 11 instant download. And I also added a border to these rectangles. So now I'm going to duplicate this page. If you head to the icon above this page, click on duplicate page. For this second page here, I'm actually going to delete the text box and this rectangle. And now with these images here, I'm going to unlock them. So for this product photo, I'm going to show the weekly printable page up close so the customer can see what they're getting. 
And I think I'm going to keep the shadow effect on these. And I'm just going to rotate them so that they're straight and then enlarge certain parts of the planner page. So here on this page, I'm showing you that you get a Monday start as well as a Sunday start. And I also changed the color of the rectangle to this darker teal color. And like I said, I don't like to put a lot of text on my product photos just because I don't want the product photo to be too busy or hard to read. Everything you need to say about your item can go into the description and you can add more details there. So for this third image, I think I want to use one of the mock-up frames to showcase the printable planner page in action because the intent for this product is for the customer to buy it and then they would print it out and then they can use it in their own planner that they already currently have. And so now I'm going to go up to the top of the page and hit duplicate page. I like to duplicate page just in case there's any elements that I wanna reuse for this new product photo. And if I don't wanna use anything on this page, I can delete it all. I'm going to head to mockups over in my left side panel. And again, if you don't have that in your side panel, you would just go to apps here. And in the search bar, you would just type in mockups and click on that. I'm going to head to the print categories in the mockups. So I'm just going to scroll through these and see which one I like. So now that I have the two mockup frames that I'm going to use, I'm going to add in my images to the frames. With these product photos, you can be as detailed as you like. Like I said, I like to just kind of keep it minimal with the text and just show off the product using photos and mockups. You can also make a product photo page of directions on how to use your product. And I've also seen Etsy creators make a photo that basically says that their item is instant download, there's no product being shipped. Ultimately, it's up to you how many photos you want to add to your product listing. And like I said, I usually have between three and five images of my product. And if you're interested in selling on Etsy, I'm sure you've been on there looking and searching and seeing what other sellers are doing. So I'm actually going to show you how to do the instant download page. So I'm going to head to the top of my page and click on the add page icon. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard to bring up a text box. So I'm going to type in instant download, no product shipped. Once you have whatever you're going to say typed, just enlarge the text box to fit the page. And then I'm just going to add a shape behind the text. So I'm going to press R on my keyboard to bring up a rectangle. I'm going to head to shape in the upper toolbar. And then you can use whatever shape you'd like. Right click, click on layers, and click on send to back. And I'm just going to change the color of the shape to that darker teal color. So I made my shape a little bit smaller by dragging in all the sides. So here are the four product photos that we created for the pink floral printable weekly planner page for our Etsy listing. Once you have all your product photos, now it's time to download them. Head up to share in the upper right hand corner. Head to download. I usually save my product photos as a PNG. You can also decide to use JPEG as well. And now I have to select the pages that I want downloaded. If you click the drop down, I'm going to uncheck the option that says all pages. I'm going to click on current page, page 30. And I like to download each page as its own, as opposed to downloading multiple in one shot, 
because when you do that, it's going to be a zipped folder and then you'd have to extract them all. And since there's only four photos, it'll just take a minute to save each one of those separately. So in your case, if you started as a new document, you would only have pages one through however many photos you made. So once you pick the page you want to download, hit none. And then click download. And then you're going to repeat the process for the other remaining photos. So once you have all your product photos, it's time to add this to Etsy. So this concludes the video on how to make product photos for Etsy listings using Canva. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting the like button. Subscribe for more videos like this and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. Remember to check the description box for how I created this printable weekly planner page in Canva. And remember to check the next video where I show you how to upload your digital products on Etsy. Remember to check the description box for any resources or products that may have been mentioned, as well as many helpful tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching.